Hey there, art nerds. So I wanted to share a special tutorial with you guys today. I received a request to teach a class on how to draw kawaii art at the Ascension Parish Library. So I created a class for them and I wanted to share it with you guys. Normally, this is something that would be on Patreon as an exclusive, but I'm delighted to share it with you guys for free today. Today, I wanted to try out a new format for how I share my classes and class materials, combining the presentation with the time lapses for the demo materials that I recorded. So I'm going to have the full presentation up on my Patreon if you guys would like to peruse it at your own speed. But hopefully, I will be able to share with you guys enough information and how to that you can start drawing cute art. I'm Becca, I'm a comic artist and illustrator, and I did conventions for over 10 years. We're gonna be talking about drawing kawaii art, dots for eyes art, cute art, that sort of thing. It is actually very simple. It began in Japan, and you can look to Sanrio or San X for some influence and inspiration, but American retailers have also kind of started doing this and making it their own, like with Tsum Tsum, as well as Pusheen as well as Squishmallows. Now, all of these have something in common, and I want you to be thinking about what elements these have in common while we're doing our demonstrations and we're talking today. It also is important for us to talk about the elements of what makes things cute and how we can really emphasize that. So we're gonna focus on the dots for eyes style today. And it's a very simple style to kind of learn and to master. I'm starting with some little ovals. I am dividing them across the middle going up and down and side to side. And on the middle line going across, I've drawn two little jelly beans for eyes. And basically the majority of the face is going to be in this bottom half of our oval. And really this is more like the bottom third of the oval. Now this style can translate into a bunch of different people, animals, and objects. That's one of the things that makes kawaii art so fun to draw and why it resonates with so many people is because it is really very flexible and pretty simple. If you can doodle, you can draw in this style. So I wanted to show you guys how to use this basic dots for eyes tutorial to draw three different things. We have my character Kara, we have a cute little cat, and then we're going to draw a little pear. So this style of drawing can translate to all sorts of different objects. And it's actually very very easy to change the expressions in this art style to convey all sorts of different emotions. It takes very little to be able to adjust it. So we're going to do our little cat face here. And by adding just two little slanty eyebrows on top and kind of a little V-shaped mouth, we can make our cat look upset. By adding a cute little open mouth, we can make our cat look happy and excited. And I've also kind of perked up the ears a little bit. This would be like body language emoting. And then for our third emotion, we've got kind of like a sad or a sleepy face. And if you tilt the ears downward a little bit, that can help convey the emotion even more. So you can also use emoji and cow emoji to inspire your cute art. So you can really see a lot of how we draw our cute characters represented in emoji and emoticons and cow emoji. So if you're drawing along at home with me today, I would like you guys to do an exercise inspired by emoji. So I want you to pick three different expressions and practice drawing them in either the dots for eyes style or your own cute art style. And I want you to think about how to abstract your shapes or simplify them so that you can make things even cuter, even rounder, even bubblier. Because when it comes to drawing cute art, we're really looking for rounded and softer forms. That's going to give it kind of the image of being almost childlike and it's gonna make it a lot cuter. So we practiced drawing our cute little face as a little cat 
face and we did some different expressions. I want to show you guys how just changing certain features, we can create three different characters and it's all going to basically boil down to how we're drawing the hair in this instance. So we're starting by drawing Kara and then we're going to draw Naomi and I want you guys to pay attention to the simplification of forms and how we're kind of making everything a little bit larger and everything a little bit rounder, especially when it comes to hair. I'm changing the facial expressions just a little bit, maybe tweaking the eyebrows just a little bit to give the characters a little bit more personality and make them look a little bit more like they look in the comic. But everything is pretty much the same in terms of the face from character to character. So this is a very, very simplified, very pared down art style. And if you guys are interested in learning how to draw characters in a variety of art styles and finding your own artistic voice, I've got some tutorials here on the channel that I think will help you guys out with that. So we have Kara, Naomi, and Pancake. And this part is totally optional, but I'm going to go ahead and ink them so you guys can see the details a little bit better. So we've got our sort of jelly bean eyes. We have a little sideways jelly bean for the mouth. And then the line is very simple. It's just a single line slightly curled upwards for Kara. I'm keeping the hair really rounded, very simplified and somewhat bouncy. And for this style, I'm actually going to cover up her ears which isn't what I normally do when I'm drawing her. But for this style, we really want to kind of simplify things. If we can simplify the details, it's going to be easier to read. It's going to be quicker to read and it's going to come across as much cuter. Same sort of thing for Naomi with the jelly bean eyes and the little jelly bean nose and the single line mouth. I'm adding the little like curls in front of her ears since that's a distinguishing characteristic of her design. So that's what we're really thinking about when we are super simplifying our character designs is those distinguishing characteristics. And this is something that I think about when I'm doing commissions, when I'm drawing people's portraits, is how do I simplify what's going on so they still look like themselves. They're still recognizable as themselves, but it comes across as much cuter and more rounded. So for her hair, I left the curls in her hair very simple, almost cloud-like, with a few stray hairs peeking out here and there. What I want you guys to do if you're drawing along at home is spend a few minutes drawing your own characters in this art style. If you do this exercise and you choose to share it online, I would love it if you would tag me at Natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, so I can see the art that you've drawn. So a lot of the thought process that goes behind drawing cute people can also be applied to drawing cute objects. So we have an acorn here, very rounded, very soft forms. Next, I'm going to draw it in a slightly more detailed chibi style where we have the more anime inspired eyes. So rather than the dots for eyes or the jelly bean eyes, we're going to have much larger anime style eyes that are going to take up about a third of the face. Now, if you're interested in learning how to draw in this art style, I have a bunch of tutorials to help you out. So make sure you check the description down below for several tutorials that'll help you nick the knack of drawing in manga inspired art styles. Due to time constraints, I don't want to go into too much detail in drawing in this style. I'm going to basically leave this as a time lapse demo and hopefully you guys will feel inspired to check out some of the tutorials that I'm going to link in the description below. I really want to focus mostly on us drawing dots for eyes art, but I did want to show a few other styles that fall under the kawaii umbrella. And believe me, what I am presenting today is not the end all be all. It is not everything that is cute and I am by far not the number one expert on this topic, although I did study it quite a bit when I was in grad school and there's a lot of interesting theory about what makes things cute. And basically, the more we draw it to look like a baby, large forehead, large eyes, small but expressive nose and mouth, the more our brains are going to read this as cute. So keep that in mind when you're designing your own cute art styles.
So now we have talked about two different ways of drawing cute faces. Let's talk about drawing cute bodies. We have the flower sack and the jelly bean. The flower sack is basically rectangular in form. Google flower sacks and that'll give you kind of an idea of what we're aiming for here. And the jelly bean is jelly bean shaped. And both of them can be very useful for drawing cute bodies. I like to use the jelly bean often when I'm drawing animals. And I like to use the flower sack and the jelly bean when drawing people. And I have a little diagram next to this kind of demonstrating how the two can be converted into a more detailed art form. So I'm going to start out with a glorified stick figure. When you're drawing in this art style, you want the head to be about the third, a third of the body size. And we have our cute little flower sack body that's taking up another third. And then I've just blocked in the arms and legs with sticks just so that I can kind of get an understanding for the pose. So in this instance, we did the flower sack and I drew a front view as well as a side view. For the ears, we're just going to do little C shapes that have kind of a little A shape in the center. You can also kind of change this up by turning those into rectangles. And I'm drawing little star shaped hands and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in today's tutorial we're just touching on it for a little bit right now i'm also going to draw the hands and the feet a little bit larger than you might expect this is the point where drawing cute things kind of boils down to what you think looks cute and what you think works well for this art style or for what you're trying to convey and for me, hands and feet are also very expressive. So it's important for me to exaggerate them and draw them a bit larger. And by star shaped hands, I mean we start with a circle and then we add little pointy fingers to it. Revisiting the flower sack versus jelly bean, I wanted to do a demonstration with a jelly bean body so you guys can kind of see how the two might differ and when you might want to use each body type. And for me, if I'm drawing younger characters or animals, as I mentioned before, the jelly bean body works quite well. If I'm drawing more femme characters or characters with larger hips, the jelly bean body works very well for that as well. If I'm drawing more masculine characters, the flower sack can work quite well because we can really kind of exaggerate the shoulders. So this is how we draw the jelly bean. And I'm going to just kind of flesh this out, designing a little character around it so you guys can kind of see how it'll work as well as the differences between the two bodies and how I approach them. But other than the torso itself, I don't really change a whole lot. The head is still one third of the total body. The torso takes up another third of the total body with the legs taking up the final third. Now you can vary these proportions up as you find your own art style. I just happen to think these proportions work quite well for this style of art. And I think they end up resulting in a very cute little character. I sort of block in the feet using little triangles and then I use um, cylinders to block in the legs and how I approach this can kind of vary depending on the character and what I want the character to be able to do for the hands I'm going to block them in with circles for the time being you may also find blocking in the hands with little mitten shapes could be very helpful as well it really kind of depends on what kind of gesture you're trying to convey and what you're doing since we're drawing two fairly statically posed characters right now I'm not going to worry about the mittens and you guys can see how I draw little star points for the fingers. So I want to challenge you to draw a self portrait in the style I just showed you guys. There are two ways to approach this exercise. You can draw how you think you look and sometimes that can result in a caricature that feels more real and feels more like you, even if it doesn't look exactly like you, or you can use your phone or a mirror for reference and try to really capture a likeness while still simplifying the forms in our dot for eye style. So here's a little demo, just kind of showing how I generally build up forms in my from stick to figure tutorials and in my from stick to figure classes. 
Next, we're gonna talk about a slightly, just slightly more detailed way of drawing kawaii and chibi characters. So we're starting with our rounded little face, dividing it in half. And rather than just the dots for eyes, I've added a very cute little eyelid on top. Think C shapes. I've also added some expressive little eyebrows. They're actually a little bit thicker than what I went with for the dots for eyes style. And basically the crux of this is just a little bit more detail, a little bit more detail. So a little more detail in her hair, a little bit more detail in her pose. Like she's actually emoting a little bit more. And we're also breaking up our glorified stick figure into we're breaking up the joints, the elbow joints and the knee joints as well. And we're going to divide this up and just add a little bit more detail at those joints. So rather than one cylinder for the whole arm, we've broken it up into two, the top part of the arm and the bottom part of the arm. And the same goes for the legs. We're also what I'm doing what I call banana fingers or balloon fingers for the hands. Really think of it kind of like balloon animals. Longer, but still very simplified, softer forms. We've also added a little bit more detail to the mechanical pen. Actually, she was holding a regular number two pencil before. Now she's holding a mechanical pencil. And I'm doing a little breakdown of the stick figure over on the side, as well as a breakdown of how I think about and handle the hand. Speaking of how I handle the hand, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our little star hands versus the balloon hands. So I'm gonna do a demo for you guys, starting with the star hand. And you wanna think about the bottom of the hand, the palm of the hand as kind of a U shape. And we're just adding short, stubby, pointy little fingers to the top. Now for the balloon hand, this is where thinking of it more as a mitten to start out with. So you have three zones in the hand. That's going to be more beneficial to drawing our balloon hands. And I have some tutorials here on the channel where I show you guys how I think about drawing hands. So I know what you guys are here for. We're here to talk about making anything cute, including animals. So I wanted to start off by kind of challenging myself and we're going to draw some cute vegetables and I apologize that it's a little bit hard to see what I'm doing but basically we are I'm referencing different vegetables so we start with a carrot and now we're doing a broccoli I have them pulled up on my screen so I can get the gist I can get the essence of the vegetables and I'm really simplifying the forms I'm really rounding everything I'm making everything shorter and cuter and we still got those little dots for eyes with various little expressions kind of referencing back to the emoji and the cow emoji exercise that I talked to you guys about earlier. That's a great way to get inspiration for different expressions and to practice drawing different expressions and seeing if people can tell what expression you're trying to make. So the whole goal of this exercise is to capture the essence. Like with the corn, I'm drawing a few kernels, but I haven't covered the whole thing in kernels, for example, to capture the essence of the object or the animal or the person, and then find a way to simplify it as much as possible. So how little detail can you include and the thing you're drawing still be recognizable as the thing you're drawing? And it's okay if you're not there yet, if you're struggling with this, the more you practice and the more you draw a variety of different things, the better you're going to get at it. So I'm going to ink them just to make them a little bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm using the pink pencil because it shows up a little bit better on camera, but it's still not the easiest thing to see. And hopefully this will give you guys an idea of what details I'm choosing to include and what details I'm choosing to leave out. And if you fail the first time, I highly recommend don't erase it. Draw it again right next to it. Take what you like from the first one, what you think you did well, what you think is successful, and make sure you bring that into your second one and just try out different things. In fact, I challenge you to fill an entire sketchbook page with drawings of cute little carrots or sweet little broccoli and try doing it a little bit different each time. And I am sure by the time you have finished the page, you have will have at least one, if not several designs that you think are very cute and that you're very happy with.
Now I know how much you guys like mushrooms, so I thought I would draw some very cute mushrooms for you guys. And I am referencing mushrooms as well. So I'm actually drawing specific mushrooms, although I cannot remember which ones are which. And I'm just practicing kind of drawing different aspects, exaggerating different aspects, and really focusing on making them small, making them cute, and making sure that I include the distinguishing traits so that you can tell one mushroom from another and it looks like a distinct line art. So we have more rounded caps. I've definitely made sure to include the cute little collars as well as the gills on the bottom side of the mushroom if that mushroom has those. If there's lines on the stem like with these enoki mushrooms, I'll include that. And I wanna make sure I include the scales on the mushroom caps when relevant as well because it is all about capturing those distinguishing details and simplifying it to make it just a little bit cuter. So this is an exercise in reduction. Now, as a comic artist with a cartoony art style, I have faced some discrimination because people assume that if you're not drawing realistically, you must not be very good at drawing. And I am here to tell you that drawing simplistically and cartoony is actually very challenging. You need to be able to draw realistically, often, not 100%. Cartoony art is a good place to start, but you do need to be able to look at the world around you, think about the world around you, decide what to abstract, what to change, and what to adjust, and then execute that. So you're taking things that you might see in the real world, you're thinking about them a whole lot, you're changing them up a whole lot, but they still need to be recognizable as those things that you're drawing. So I think as a very biased, cute art style, cartoony comic artist with a manga influence to her art, that cartoony art is actually more challenging to do well than realistic art. That is not said to discourage you, but to inspire you. If you can draw cute cartoony art, you've already got a leg up because you know how to look at the world, how to internalize the world, and then how to communicate the world that you have in your mind with other people. So go you! So I wouldn't be me if I didn't try drawing some super cute art supplies. So we're going to start with a little pencil. And the real key here is to exaggerate. So we're going to draw a very stubby little pencil with plenty of eraser and plenty of point and a cute little face on it. Now he's so excited to be here drawing today with us. So next we're going to draw a cute, oh my gosh, I cannot see what I'm doing. I'm so sorry. My hand is just totally and completely covering it up. A crayon. We're drawing a cute, sleepy little crayon. And I actually wanted to draw a few different crayons. I wanted to kind of iterate on this idea like we were talking about earlier so that I could come up with several different cute crayon designs. And while I was working on these, I was kind of thinking about how cute these would be as stickers or maybe as a repeating pattern or maybe even as a washi tape. So this kind of cute art, like this ruler here, who is a very short little, maybe two inch ruler, this kind of cute art translates well onto things. So not only can it be useful when creating comics and comic characters and OCs and drawing caricatures, but it can also be useful in product design and designing cute merchandise that you might choose to sell. Let me know down in the comments if you guys would like some art supplies slash school supply stickers, because if you guys are interested, I will definitely get on it. And now I'm inking it just so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing and what kind of design choices I'm making.
I think it is high time for us to draw some cute animals. So again, I am referencing using Google the various animals that I'm drawing. We're gonna start with a cute Shiba Inu. And I really wanna exaggerate the facial expression. I really wanna exaggerate the little eyebrows. I really wanna exaggerate the ears. Next, we're gonna draw a way too simplified cat. And then we're going to draw a, what are you? What are, oh, a guinea pig. We're gonna draw, <laughs> I like how I couldn't remember. We're gonna draw a guinea pig. And again, if you're not happy with how it's coming out, if you're not happy with the design choices you're making, don't erase it. Just draw another version next to it. Then we're gonna draw a cute little rabbit. So I'm trying to keep all of the features very rounded. I'm keeping the eyes very simplified, but I'm making sure to really represent the ears, the noses and the mouths. And I'm also trying to represent the face shapes of these animals so that you can recognize the dog, the cat, the hamsters. Yeah, it's probably a hamster, although it looks more like a guinea pig now that I look at it, and the rabbit. Hey, look, we have an entire sketchbook page of cute little things. And I bet you guys can draw all of these things because I shared my process with you guys and hopefully you were paying attention. And not only can you draw all of these things, but hopefully I've given you some clues, some ideas, some inspiration for how to make this your own and draw the things you want to be able to draw. So you can make pretty much anything cute using simplification and exaggeration. Gundam and Chibi Gundam are an excellent example of this. The larger head, the shorter torso and legs, the larger weapons and the larger headgear all lean towards cute. It's kind of that babyfication and that simplification. Solid Snake here with the larger head and the smaller torso, the larger expressive eyes and more emotion on his face reads as cuter than the more realistic, more detailed version. And every fan of Full Metal Alchemist gets squee when Alphonse Eric is in his cuter chibi form. He's just so cute. He is definitely not intimidating at all in this form. So pay attention to which elements are simplified and which elements are exaggerated. So I'm going to do a little bit more drawing with you guys. I hope I've inspired you to draw along and to put your own spin on it. You definitely do not have to draw what I'm drawing but I wanted to share just a little bit more drawing process with y'all. So I'm going to draw some cute mermaids and I apologize that it is so blown out. It is so hard to see, but hopefully you'll get the gist in a minute. And I start by kind of sketching out the gesture and kind of blocking in the head and the body before I really start adding in any identifying features. And since I want several mermaids on this page and I want them interacting with each other, I'm actually going to block out several of them before I really start creating characters out of them, giving them identifying characteristics, giving them different hair and different clothing and different personalities, because I want to make sure that they'll all fit on the page and that it seems like they're all interacting with each other. So while I'm doing this, I want you guys to notice some things. What kind of bodies am I using for this? Am I using the jelly bean bodies or am I using the flower sack bodies? What kind of eyes am I using for this? Are we using the jelly bean style 
style eyes or are we using the more detailed eyes? What kind of ears did I draw? Are we using that C shape to simplify the ears? What kind of hands are we going with today? Are we doing the star shaped hands or are we doing the balloon hands? All of those choices are valid choices. It's really just a matter of taste and what style you think will suit the illustration or your goals for the illustration better. You might decide to draw some mermaids along with me and you might decide to go with the balloon hands and the jelly bean bodies and the slightly more detailed eyes that have the eye lid going on top of them. And that's a valid choice. If uh, for these, rather than just like a smooth face, there's actually a little bump bump for the cheek and that's a design choice. The round, chubby, cute cheeks read as cuter, read as more baby-like. And remember what we talked about earlier, the more things look like a baby version of themselves, the cuter we find them, like baby Yoda versus regular Yoda, something, keep that in mind. So even though we are drawing mermaids and we're drawing it very simplified, I still want it to read as mermaids. So I'm drawing in the fins and I'm drawing in just a little bit of jewelry. Just keep in mind the more details you add, the harder it is for your viewer, your audience to see what you've drawn. And sometimes that can be useful. Like a super detailed comic page is gonna encourage the reader to linger on that page. But for this sort of art style, it's meant to be read very quickly. It's meant to appeal to the audience very quickly. So keeping the details to a minimum, just enough to give each mermaid a distinct personality is really what we're going for here. Now I wanted to go with three different hair types. We have a longer haired mermaid, we have a mermaid who has dreadlocks, and then we're going to have a mermaid with shorter hair. And I also wanted to think about how the hair would handle underwater, how it would move. So you guys have noticed I have rotated my sketchbook around and that's just to make it easier for me to draw the face of the mermaid who's upside down. As I've said in many of my other tutorials, feel free to flip around and move your sketchbook in a way that benefits you and helps you draw what you want to be able to draw. So even though I have drawn this sort of thing a thousand times, I'm still doing my underdrawing, I'm still doing my stick figure, I'm still doing my construction lines, I'm still trying to figure out where everything is going to go. Now some artists don't need to do this and that's fine, but some artists do and I find that it helps me draw more consistently and it helps my art look better. It keeps the eyes in line, it keeps the facial expression on track instead of of like wandering to one side of the face. It's just a system of drawing that I find helpful. If you like what I'm doing and you would like to learn how to do this, I've got a bunch of tutorials on how to draw and paint people. I'll link that playlist for you guys down in the description below. And I've also got lots of drawing in general tutorials because I sincerely believe that if you want to learn how to draw and you're willing to put the time and practice in, I can teach you how to draw. So I'll link those playlists down in the description for you guys as well, because I wanna help you guys make art a habit. And to me, drawing is one of the most accessible forms of making art. Maybe it isn't the absolute most accessible, but it requires very few materials. It requires very little money and you can do it just about anywhere. So now we have our three little mermaids sketched out. They've got fairly distinct little personalities and I'm going to go ahead ahead and ink them because at some point in the future I would like to watercolor them. I think they will be super cute. Now if you would like to paint with me I have some start to finish tutorials where I take you from the sketching process all the way to the inks and all the way to the finished watercolor. I'll be sure to link that playlist for you guys. There's a lot of just step by step how I'm drawing things for you guys that I think you guys will really enjoy. So even though I talked a lot about keeping the hair simple and you should keep the hair simple, we have three different characters on this page. So I want to make sure that they have three distinct hairstyles. And I also want to make sure the viewer understands that they're underwater, which means we need to have some movement in the hair. The hair needs to be heading up towards the surface of the water like it is lighter than the mermaid's mass. We also need some movement in the hair. So for this mermaid, for example, her hair is up and moving behind her like she's swimming forward. And I'm also adding some star accents as well as some pearl beads around her neck just to add a little bit of personality. So these sort of small character details can help create 
different characters while still using a very simplified, fairly basic art style. It does come down to which details you choose to include and which ones you choose to leave out. We talked a lot about drawing kawaii art today. There are a lot of different ways to go about doing this, so I highly encourage you to go out there, find art styles you like, find artists you like, and do your research. Practice drawing your characters in their art styles to see what elements of that style you like. Because as artists, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And the way that we learn is by learning from the artists who came before us. So in that way, no artist who has benefited from the knowledge of an art another artist is truly self-taught. We're all teaching each other and we're all learning from one another. I hope I was able to help you guys out today sharing what I have learned about drawing in this art style. And I hope I've inspired you to pick up a pencil and to give it a try. If you're looking for more art tutorials, make sure you check the description below. And if you're one of my amazing patrons on Patreon, I have shared the presentation that goes with this video over there so you can pursue it at your own pace. They're kind of designed to go hand in hand. When I taught this class in person, there was a bunch of in-person demos and me taking volunteers and me showing them how to do what I'm doing over on the whiteboard. So hopefully you guys were able to get kind of a taste for that in today's tutorial. If you're looking for more inspiration or more of my art, I hope you guys will check out my comic, Seven Inch Kara. You can read it for free at sevenincharacom or you can check me out on Instagram. I am at natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P for just about everything. If you decided to draw along with me today or felt inspired by the information that I shared with you guys, I would love it if you would show me what you've drawn. You can either join me in my art-centric Discord server, The Paint Box, and I'll try to remember to put a link to that down in the description below, or I would love it, it would mean the world to me if you would tag me so I can see what you've been drawing and maybe that'll inspire other people to give my tutorials a try because it's really important for me to help as many people as possible make art a habit. Art and drawing have been such a wonderful, fulfilling part of my life. It's allowed me to meet and reach so many people. And I would truly love it if you guys would help me meet and reach even more people who might enjoy learning to draw from me. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Here are my links. If you found it helpful, useful, and informative, leave me a big thumbs up. And if you like what I do, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification so YouTube can let you know when I've updated. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope this has been helpful, useful, and informative. Huge, huge, huge thanks to my amazing patrons over on Patreon. Their support helps make tutorials like this possible.